I want to do a follow-up to my last video where I talk about the prevalence of variations on mech designs in the Battletech universe. Hello, everybody. My name is Preston Poulter. Welcome to my channel, Lords of Iron. So, my video, which you can check out, just info card, just click right there on the little I. It, it got a myriad of reactions. Some people were absolutely like, yes. And I think those people, for one, I saw... I think logically, as I argue in the video, it just makes sense. Like, if these things aren't being manufactured anymore and you're having to cannibalize, you know, the remains of the mechs you blew away to repair your old mechs, well, well, then in essence, you're going to be making Frankensteinian mechs, you know, by definition. Oh, you lost the right arm for here. Here, hey, grab a right arm off of that griffin you blew away. And uh, of course, they're going to be Frankensteinian. And of course, you're going to end up with all kinds of variations, really I think when you think about it logically, there's no other way to do this. And furthermore, if you look at it from like a role-playing point of view, like your mech is the biggest, most important part of your character. And of course, players should want to customize this over time as they're playing the game constantly. It's like, oh, hey, we found this SRM pack or an LRM pack. And don't you want to swap out that rack of missiles on top of your griffin to maybe make it more close in? And also, if you look at a lot of the mech designs, or at least a fair amount of them, particularly some of the early ones, they've got these handheld weapons. Like the Wolverine has one, the Griffin has one. How hard would it be to swap out one handheld weapon for another? And I know you're thinking, well, those are the unseen category of mechs they were borrowing from shows. You look at the Clint. Okay, the Clint has a handheld weapon. So it doesn't make any logical sense why you wouldn't see a lot of variations on the field. Furthermore, let's look at the rules. And the campaign operations book, which, by the way, is, is a pretty enjoyable read, it allows for you to make and field an entirely customized, purely from scratch, mech or lance. It just, it's going to cost a lot more. Now, the campaign operations book is a little wibbly-wobbly about, well, what about kind of like just field variations where you're swapping out one missile launcher for another kind of stuff? And in passing it, no, it's like, yeah, you, you know, you could see that. Um, it leaves it up to the game master to adjudicate. So I put up a thread on Reddit. I'm like, hey, why don't we take these campaign operations, at least the theory of it, and start creating units and have an online league where we play things through Mega Mac. And that got a fair number of upvotes. A lot of people thought that was a pretty good idea. They were saying, hey, I want to do this at my local game store. So cool. So, going forward, I just want to address how much I, as the theoretical game master of this league I wish to create, want to allow people to make variations in their mechs, and, well, I want to encourage it, because, to me, as I've argued, I think that was absolutely what you would see. Furthermore, I mean, who doesn't want to adjust the mech to make slight adjustments to their tactics? So, in the spirit of that, I wanted to go look at the Panther, which this was one of my more popular videos where I just talked about the Panther and hey, you know what? You, you can check that out too. So the Panther, clearly looking at the view count, a lot of people love that mech, but I was looking at it and I'm like, first off, I always thought the armament was strange. Okay, PPC, good. SRM4, why? In the last game I played, the Panther, unfortunately, like, first exchange of fire lost its right arm, so it lost the big gun, and now you're just running around with an SRM-4. It's not exactly something to be feared. But wouldn't it make more sense if instead of an SRM-4, that were an LRM-5? And then the Panther would really be encouraged to just sit back and fire, and now it's adding, say, 13 points on average in damage every round for something it can hit. That's cool. Right? You've increased the power of your long-range capability by a third. And in terms of tonnage, it's exactly the same to swap out, say, an SRM-4 with an LRM-5. So, to me, this is absolutely a variant that you would see all over the place, but I didn't see, you know, I went check the master unit list, I didn't see it nowhere, so I made one. Here we go. I call it the PTN-9WL. WL for my comic book, White Lily. Hey, I get to name them, alright? In terms of battle point value, the Panther 9R with the PPC, the traditional one, that weighs in at 769 battle points. And once we make the changes, the battle point value actually comes up to 778. Now, in terms of C-bills, which, when you're looking at how you're going to do a campaign system, that is one of the questions. Are you going to be paying the monetary system for the max, or are you going to be doing the battle point value? 
really, I'm perfectly fine with looking at the C-bill system, in which case the mechs cost essentially the same. There is one variation, which, again, the Battletech universe to me a lot of times just makes no sense. But in the technical readouts, it says, originally when this was manufactured back during the Star League days, strangely without any of the Star League technologies, they put in an extra heat sink and more armor, and the Panther sported a large laser instead of a PPC. So that mech, the 8Z, not very good. You can kind of see why the Star League engineers went, hmm, maybe it needs a PPC instead of a large laser. I don't know why they didn't ask other questions like, how come this isn't fielding double heat sinks? But again, it's Battletech. It's not supposed to make a ton of sense. So the battle point value of the Panther 8Z is 741, and it is slightly less expensive at 2.3 million. I really don't understand why it needs the extra heat sink at 13 heat sinks. What? It fires its large laser and its SRM4. So, oh wow, you generated 11 points of heat. You got two over. So it could run, fire its entire weapon package, and accumulate zero heat. It would have to jump and fire everything in order to accumulate two. To me, that's overkill. I would rather, say, take out that heat sink and put in something more exciting, which is what they did when they made the Panther 9R. But for me, the variation I really love is the close combat version of the Panther, which every time I'm playing the computer game, and I look, I've been hooked on the computer I'm sorry. Not even the Rogue Tech version, just the straight out-of-the-box version of the computer game. There's one mech I make over and over again, and it really allows me to go from, say, you're starting with, you know, kind of your recon lance to kind of build up in the battle value because it's such an effective fighter and i was thinking of giving it somewhat of a naming convention so here's pjc is going to be what i call a lot of my variations so here's the panther pjc my close in fighter which in the computer game this thing kicks ass all right and in my opinion sacrilege here i know better than the jenner granted not as fast but of a close in fighting panther versus a jenner Okay, if you lose initiative, you use your jump jets and stand on a hilltop. I mean, what's the gender going to... No. Meanwhile, the fact that you have more weapons, more armor, going to weigh out. Now, in the classic duel where the Panther has a PPC, the Jenner can get in close and then the PPC has a hard time hitting. But if instead the Panther is fielding a large laser, a medium laser, and an SRM-6, which, that's a real simple change, okay? You just take out the PPC, which costs 7 tons, put in a large laser, which costs 5, that gives you 2 extra tons... One ton to upgrade the SRM4 to an SRM6. You got one ton left over, put in a medium laser. Easy peasy. That thing can shell out a fair amount of damage at close range. And at long range, I mean, a large laser is like a PPC. It doesn't go quite as far. It doesn't hit for quite as much. But the fact that all of your weapons work in unison in terms of you always want to close and get close, I like that better than what I always felt was kind of a schizophrenic package of the PPC and the SRM4. And the battle value of this mech is the highest of all of the Panthers. It's 789, but the cost in C bills is 2.4 million. So you're saving money for a more efficient battle mech in terms of battle points. I don't know how much stock you put in it, but for me, this variation, it rocks in the computer game, it rocks in the board game. I love this thing. This would be the Panther we would see everywhere. So it's 789 points for a savings. It's only 2.4 million in terms of C-bills because PPCs are so expensive compared to, say, the weapons that we're replacing it with. It's the most efficient Panther in terms of how much you're paying in C-bills to get battle point value-wise. If you're just going with battle point value, hey, it's a close-end fighter. I love the mech. It's really tough. It rocks in the computer game. If you're allowed to check it out, I encourage everyone to try it. Now, where do we put the medium laser? Again, and this is where I look at the computer game. You know, like the computer game has this, okay, well, we clearly had to route energy to fire the PPC to the right arm, so we can put in energy mounts there. So I put it in the same spot. So for me, the Panther, just going with the conventions and trying to make a nod here, if we were going purely logically, you would put like the medium laser somewhere else so that when he didn't lose the right arm, he didn't lose all your weapon systems. But for me, the right arm has both the large and the medium laser, and the SRM-6 sits right there in the torso. So there you go. As I get more details about the League, I will let you know, but whenever I'm setting up Mega Mech, these variations will be available for whoever wants to play them. This has been Preston Poulter with Lords of Iron. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.